So hi all, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Mario Fusco and uh, today I was supposed to be here to speak about uh, how to design a Java API, but in reality, if you were at, uh, at Venkat uh, Deep Dive yesterday morning, he spoiled the second part of this talk and uh, uh, during the keynote he spoiled the first part. And uh, and uh, and what happened? Uh, the, the funny thing is that uh, at the end he also started speaking about Project Loom, which, by the way, is the topic of my second talk tomorrow. And at that point, I was like, "Don't dare to do this! Stop it, please!" Okay, but okay, okay. Anyway, let's 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 do this the same. Um, okay, so first of all, what, what is an API? Everybody knows what is an API. It's a a, a protocol between two pieces of software, okay? And uh, you have, and it's a, it's a contract, and it's a contract that you have to, to adhere with, to, to respect. Otherwise, uh, uh, you know, you call a method that, uh, that are supposed to do something, or, or you think that it's doing something, and it does something different in a, so in a totally different place, and, and, and stuff like this can happen, right? So uh, you, 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 you have to follow the contract. Okay, so and and of course, an API is something that you, as a user, an API uh, are used to 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 invoke, to call, to achieve a, a a given task, which can be really, really everything today. Okay, so again, uh, I, I said this: it is a contract between who provides the API and who consume it. So the, the the API say, okay, if I if you do this and that, you will obtain this result, this service, or whatever. And, and, and everybody are happy if you do so, okay? Uh, but uh, more than that, an API is also, uh, uh, also uh, works to, d to define a boundary, a boundary between two different pieces of software, okay? And why this is very important? Because our stuff is really complex and we need to modularize, modularize thing, to think in module. Okay, so you, you care about your stuff and you trust that on the other side it's working and expected, but you use the other side, the, 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 the part behind the API that you are using as a black box. Okay, this is probably not entirely true. Who, have, who have did some debugging of Spring or Hibernate or, 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 or whatever while using it because uh, probably there was a bug there or probably you didn't understand the API which is more likely, uh, but generally, generally what you do is that you use the API as a, as a black box, so you think in module, uh, and, 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 and everything behind that API is totally encapsulated. Okay, so, and why should you care? Uh, okay, so everybody are API users, but why should you care how to design a good API? Because, uh, uh, our software doesn't work in isolation, and so much more often we use other services, but it's quite common that we need to expose what we do as a service, okay? And we do this with an API, and we need to design this API possibly to be uh, nice to be used. And in reality, uh, there are a f a lots of basic principles uh, that you need to follow to create a nice API. I tried to list some of them here. Uh, it has to be yeah, intuitive, understandable, learnable. Maybe you don't want to read the, the, the documentation. The way you learn the API is using the auto-completion on, on your IDE. Uh, but of course, this doesn't mean that, uh, it, that uh, it should be well documented. Document is, 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 is really important and then should be uh, as concise as possible, because in this way it's easier to to learn. It should be self-defensive, should be idiomatic of the language. For instance, if you if it's a Java API that reads like a, 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 an Haskell API, okay, maybe that's cool, but it's not really idiomatic, and the biggest biggest part of the Java programmer will not feel at home using that API, and. Uh, uh, it should have the right level of ab abstraction. It, it should uh, shouldn't leak any any abstraction uh, to, to 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 the user. Okay, if they are not their responsibility uh, responsibility to, to 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 cover that specific duty, uh, and for uh, strongly uh, uh, typed language, it should it must 
uh, usually correctly the, the, the type system. Uh, it should have a limited number of entry point. And, and, and the last one is, is it's also very important to me at least, it should respect the principle of the less astonishment. I mean, when I'm doing something, again, it should be very intuitive. But when I'm doing something, I, sh I should never be surprised of the result. If I'm surprised of the result, there is something that is not very intuitive in how the API has been designed. Okay, and, and of, of course, uh, yeah, ironically, I'm, I'm putting a, a quote of Venkat here, but uh, oh, 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 of course, uh, 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 the, the real important thing is that uh, 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 our software is, the, the only thing that you can be sure is that our software should be designed for changes. It, 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 it's not static, it will change every day. And uh, of course, it doesn't mean that you will add a map of object to object as a parameter to all your methods just in case, but uh, you just, you should be ready uh, to evolve your software. And uh, the first rule to do this is keep it as small as possible, okay? Software doesn't age like wine, Unfortunately, it ages like milk. So, uh, so this means that uh, the more you add stuff in it, the, the harder it will be to support it. Uh, if you add more bloatware, more uh, uh, method, uh, if you have a, a bigger surface of your uh, API that is uh, not really necessary, uh, probably you are mostly confusing your, 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 user, your users instead of providing a, a good service. And also it will prevent uh, any further improvement. Uh, so in essence, uh, it's something easy to add. It's not a, 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 a good enough reason to really add that feature to, to your API, okay? The typical example here is, is Java serialization, okay? The, the fact is, is that uh, every feature you add to your API should work orthogonally with all other features, okay? And this, for instance, uh, uh, happened again for Java serialization and it has been a problem for all other evolvement of, 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 of the language of Java. I remember uh, when I uh, was uh, uh, yeah, just collaborating uh, to, 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 to development, to the design, not the development of Project Lambda, and uh, we lo they lost, I think, solid six months just to figure out if a Lambda should be serialized or not and how to serialize it. And, yeah, and, and that's because the feature now is there and we have to cope with it, but probably shouldn't be there for, from the beginning, okay? So uh, I want to, to give a, a very uh, practical uh, talk, as I said, and I, I want to give some very practical hints and example. And the first, of course, is about, is about the documentation. So, uh, so very often, especially for open source uh, 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 project, uh, including mine, the, the documentation uh, looks like this, which is not really helpful. And uh, in reality, in reality, uh, uh, there's a lot to say in the Java doc, right? In reality, even for a simple setter, you can say uh, what, what is the expected range, well, what happens uh, if uh, you provide a value that is not expected? Uh, you could say if that thing is supposed to be uh, trade safe or not. Uh, you could say if that thing is supposed to be immutable or not, meaning that the set may return eventually a copy of the object instead, instead of, of mutating the value in place. There are a lot of things to say even for a simple setter. Okay, otherwise, you, if you don't do this, you leave your user with a, a lot of question marks, with a lot of doubt. The, 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 it's really hard to figure out uh, what's going on in your API, okay? And once again, it's all about uh, boundaries and, and modular reasoning, okay? So the, 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 the API is the boundary of your, uh, of your uh, uh, software and, uh, and the the way you document it, explain to user how to use it without looking inside the, the code, hopefully. Okay? Uh, 
then, uh, yeah, this is something that I see quite often in uh, many Java API, and uh, here I'm showing the string builder. You have tons of, uh, of uh, 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 overloads that can be sometimes confusing, sometimes they are necessary because of the primitive type uh, work in Java. Sometimes they are really not. I don't understand why I should have an append of an object and also an append of a string there. It probably they are the same thing. Uh, and uh, we, we overdo often a lot with this convenience method. We add a lot of them because why not? Yeah, but the more you have, the, 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 the easier is the life for your user. And yeah, again, it's not. It's exactly the opposite. So let's try to, to rework this example. What's wrong with this example? Uh, here I'm uh, creating a very simple interface to place a stock order, and I have a method to sell stock and a few methods to buy them. Uh, uh, Mm, considering if there is a commission to be paid or not, or, or if uh, the price is uh, fixed or within a range. Okay, so what's wrong with, is with this API? First of all, uh, there are too many overloads. It's, they are confusing. And the other problem here is that uh, you have a, an inconsistent uh, order of the argument. In one case, you, you uh, I put the price before the quantity, and the other I did the opposite, which is also confusing. And, and uh, if you have long uh, uh, list of arguments, it's also very hard to use because uh, it's very easy to, to put a number instead of, of the other e e in this case, even because not only they are a lot, but they are also of the same type. So how can I do better? I just create these two methods, sell and buy, with the, with the same uh, order of argument. And uh, if since the price it's a, a, a complex uh, thing in my domain, it's, it's not only a number, but could be a range, could, could, could have a commission on it. OK, so let's try to think, to, 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 to model this thing uh, inside, inside my domain. OK, so the price is a, com it's a complex thing. So let's create a price object. Okay, and to create this price, this price object, another uh, um, suggestion that I often uh, give uh, is to avoid the constructor, to avoid uh, um, exposing public constructor to the user. Okay, I prefer to use a factory method inside my API. Uh, this is because uh, if I do this. I can also return uh, subclasses of, of this price object, and I can also do check, uh, and I can uh, yeah do check and 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 return special uh, uh, subclasses of this object in case uh, uh, there is uh, some condition or another. It gives me a lot more for uh, flexibility. Okay. Um, by the way, please feel free to interrupt me with questions. I, I would like to, to keep this as interactive as possible. So if you have doubt, please let me know. Uh, OK, another thing that I like are, are Fluent API. So these are two different ways of uh, defining the price. Uh, here I have two setter. And in the, in the, second, in the second version, I, I, I call this method with because it's, it's not only setting the, 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 the value, but it's also returning the same object so I can fluently concatenate uh, more invocations. So the way I use these two things is, in the, in the first case, I have to create the, the object and that set the commission and say if it's gross or net, and then I'm finally ready to use it. And in the second case, uh, I can fluently define with one single statement the price uh, and then use it. Yes. Uh, here I typically have an astonishment. Does with <laughs> message the object or create a new object? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it is not defined uh, in this uh, in this API and 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 this uh, when where the Java docs command, right? So yeah, we are back uh, to to this. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I uh, I mean, 
uh, I, I prefer immutable object, but sometimes they are just uh, uh, more more pressure on on the garbage collector and stuff like this. So this is this has to be evaluated case by case if the object is mutable or not. Uh, it's not clarified by this interface, uh, but you should of course say it inside the, inside the Java doc. Okay, so yeah, I, 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 by doing so, you can concatenate again multiple invocation and use the result directly in your in your method. Okay, and I really like Fluent API, as I said, and of course, a, a very nice example in Java is with the Stream API. Uh, everybody knows it, I hope. Uh, but I even there, I, I'm afraid that there are a few problems because in, then in Java 9 they had a few more methods and here there is another problem quite typical of some API. You see the problem here? There is not consistency in the name, I believe. I mean, limit and, and, and uh, take while are doing the same thing. The, the first is limiting uh, the the sides of the stream based uh, on a on a fixed side, and the second is limiting the sides on the value based on the value of a predicate. But they are doing the same thing with the different verbs, and this could be confusing. That that there is no name consistency in this in the name of this method. Okay, so uh, a, a method is mostly an action, so. It's probably made of, of, the name is made of more words, but probably the most important words is the verb because it is an action, so pay attention to the verbs. Uh, here I, I have two different verbs for the same thing. That, that, that's why I say that there's no consistency here. Okay, and uh, yeah, I said I like a Fluent API, but nowadays I see they are sometimes also abused uh, they work v very, very well for builders, in my opinion. So if you are, if you have a, 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 if you are building something, it's nice to build them with a Fluent API. And if you think about it, the Stream API, it is a builder. You are building the, the, a pipeline of, of action that you want to take on a collection. That's why it, what you are doing with a Stream API. A Stream API is a builder, and this is why it's nice uh, to have a Fluent API for it, okay? Uh, different topic here. Um, uh, this is about the type of arguments that you should use in your, uh, in your method. Here, I'm uh, concatenating a list of strings, so I'm providing this method to my user that co concatenates an array list of strings. But uh, here, the... the, the, the um, it, it, this is too limiting. I mean, why this should be work with, with only with array list and not with a different kind of list, okay? Should they care about the limitation of uh, the implementation of the list, a specific implementation? I don't need it. So I use the weakest possible type because in this way, the weakest possible types that it works for me, of course, because in this way I uh, enlarge the usability of this uh, method and I don't need anymore that shitload of, of overloaded, different overloaded methods that uh, I have, for instance, in the string builder uh, that I showed before. Okay, so I don't care if it's a array list or a linked list, but please don't use linked list, of course. Linked list are heavy, never use them. Uh, so, uh, Mm, so I can of course say, okay, a list is enough for me, and then I can I can iteratively continue this process. Do I care about uh, the order, the sequence of the item in this list? If if I don't, I can replace the list with a collection. Okay, and then I can ask, do I care to know in advance what is the size of this collection? If I don't, I can replace the collection with an iterable. Okay, and by doing this process, I mean enlarging the, 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 the scope or the usability of, of this method. And uh, uh, in my opinion also, it's important the same applies for the return type, but this time for, uh, for a dis different reason. Okay, so in this example, I have a person and uh, I want to return uh, a 
uh, the list of addresses of the sibling of this person, okay? Uh, and then at some point, uh, I, I, uh, I, and, and then I provide this implementation that is returning a list, as you can see, but then I figure out that uh, for sure the, the order of the address in this list is not uh, meaningful for, for the user, and moreover, you know, there could be, in this way, there could be du duplication. It's very likely um, that there will be the same address uh, more than once in this list, okay? So the project manager come to me and say, uh, I, 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 don't I want only unique value. I want to avoid duplicates, okay? And you say, ah, okay, I know. I replace the set with the, the list with a set. And at that point, uh, uh, the, 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 your method doesn't compile anymore because it, it is trying to return a set instead of a list. And uh, the only thing to, fix, to fix that is that, okay, now your contract says that you have to return a list, you cannot change it anymore, otherwise you will break the client code, but uh, of course you cannot leave this method this way. So what, what uh, you, you need to do is to create uh, is to create a, a wasteful copy of that set inside the list just to make the compiler happy, okay? And you can avoid this if you, if you before think, okay, I don't need the returned value to be a list. It can be a collection. And this gives you more flexibility in future. Re remember, you want to evolve, to change, to be ready to change, okay? And this gives you more flexibility in future because, yes, Set will be so more self. Uh, just self documenting. If you say set, you will say by then already what you, uh, what you, what you need. Okay, so the question is will set be more self explanatory? Because at that point, the user of that API will know that, uh, uh, that uh, there are only unique addresses in that set. Uh, yes. Uh, as I say, the, uh, create, uh, um, designing an API is, uh, is a uh, balancing act. Yes, you, uh, by returning a collection, you are losing this information. Once again, the Java doc is your friend. But the drawback is that uh, by keeping a set, you are, um, are um, uh, uh, you stick with a set and you cannot return a different kind of collection, which could be okay or could be harmful in future, you don't know. Uh, you are more constraining this method and probably this will harm uh, the evolvability of this method in future. So yeah, that, I don't have an answer to be honest. There, there is not a right answer in this case. I see your point, thanks. Okay. Another suggestion is that, okay, we have lambda expression. This is very important. We have lambda expression. Also allow user to use uh, uh, lambda expression while invoking your API, okay? So wh what's happening here? I have this uh, interface listener uh, with uh, two callback method uh, that notify me uh, before a given event and after a given event uh, uh, it's happened. Okay, and then when uh, I register my listener, I have to uh, to provide an implementation of this listener that that has both the the method implementation. I cannot use a lambda because it has two two method. It, it is not a, a functional interface. And then I have to use an ugly uh, anonymous inner class, which is very verbose. Okay, and how can I fix this? In reality, I can split this. I can have two different listener. Uh, uh, each of them at this point is a functional interface. I can register only on the event on which I'm interested in. And by doing so, I'm allowed to use a, a Lambda expression at this point, or, uh, or even better, better a method reference as in this example. And, uh, and uh, by doing so, I can also realize that I don't need this interface at all, because if you look at them, at the end of the day, they are just consumer of an event. So you can just get rid of the declaration of those, uh, uh, of those uh, um, uh, two additional interface and just use the consumer interface that, that is provided by the native uh, Java API. 
Uh, and of course, yeah, also here, uh, there is a drawback before you ask. Probably having a, an interface that is called before listener or after listener is, is more speaking than having a, 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 an interface that is called consumer, that it's up to you if you want to create those additional interfaces or not. But the message here is that uh, mostly allow your user to pass Lambda to your API because it will be much nicer and concise. And uh, yeah, another thing that I uh, uh, really don't like in Java are, are checked the exception. If you know me, you know this. Uh, and and uh, uh, the, the problem is that uh, checked the exception not only are not that useful in my opinion, but they, re they play really, really well uh, bad with, with Lambda expression. They uh, oblige you to have a try catch inside your uh, Lambda expression, and it becomes super verbose, almost as verbose as an anonymous inner class, which is very ugly. And in reality, okay, this is a study made by Stack Overflow by uh, uh, parsing a lot of uh, uh, GitHub project. I, I believe this is a few years old now, probably I should check if there is a, a, a more updated version. But anyway, already in this study, they figure out that uh, in reality, people in average doesn't do any useful stuff inside the, inside the, the check the, 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 the catch close or the check at exception. We log statement, we do a print stack trace, many empty, uh, block are left empty. Uh, what, what I do normally is retrowing it as an R runtime exception, uh, which is probably the, m the m uh, most reasonable thing to do there, uh, just to propagate the, the error and not losing it. Uh, but th that's because uh, uh, in this way, I'm not propagating that, that check at the exception to uh, the, the, the downstream to the caller. Okay? So, uh, yeah, if since we are using check at exception this way, probably they are not that good to prevent runtime error, uh, and uh, and uh, and not only they are not that useful to prevent runtime error, but again they oblige us to write a lot of of uh, boilerplate code that is not uh, that is not useful. So. Uh, uh, why I'm saying this is because of my suggestion, okay, I uh, also understand that this is very de debatable and personal. I, I really don't like check at exception. I don't see the point in using them. So my personal suggestion is not throw, don't throw check at exception in the method of your uh, API uh, because you are not making it user friendly if you do so, okay? Okay, this is a, 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 a different topic again. Uh, I call it the dear uh, loan uh, pattern. I will explain why, but uh, in essence, is what uh, if you were at uh, deep dive yesterday morning of Venkat, it's what he called uh, the uh, execute around method pattern. Okay, I don't know, well, somebody was there yesterday morning? Okay, a few, okay. Um, so uh, Venkat called it uh, execute around method pattern, but le let's see how this works and uh, what's the purpose here. Okay, I have uh, an input stream. I'm reading uh, this IP2 input stream and put, it, put uh, the content inside a byte array that then I want to return, and, uh, and then I'm done. This is what this method does. Uh, and of course, there is something wrong in this method, right? Uh, why so? Because I'm, I'm missing to close the file input stream, and uh, uh, and then then I create a, a file pointer leak, and and to avoid this, I should remember to close it. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, of course we can do a little better than this because since Java seven we have the try with resource uh, statement. So instead of doing this, since uh, the input stream is uh, an auto-closable resource, I can do rewrite this uh, with a try with resource. But still, this is, this is, uh, uh, still this is a leaky abstraction. My user has to remember to close the file. And if it if, uh, uh, doesn't do it, uh, you have a, pro uh, a problem. 
uh, and why so? Because you are not in control of what's going on. You are not in control of the file resource. You are all of the user to create it and do with it what they want. And, and probably he will not do the, uh, the, 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 um, the best possible thing. And as I said, a good API should be also self-defensive. And, and this is also a leaky abstraction because you are uh, leaving to the user uh, uh, the burden of, of, of remembering of views to try it with resource statement of to close the resource in some, in some way. How can we do better than this? I can uh, create uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this method that I call the with file because it does something with file and I pass to it a file name. Okay, I have some boilerplate still because of the uh, IO exception, which is a check it exception uh, uh, um, raised uh, by this thing. Uh, and then in my code, in my API, okay, in the implementation of the API, I, can, I will use the uh, uh, try with resource, okay? And then uh, this is the reason. And then how the user use this? Uh, he, he just call with file and does what he wants. And uh, he doesn't have to remember to close this because the closing of the resources is made uh, uh, by internally by the, the with file method. And uh, so the reason why this is called the loan pattern is that I, as a, the implementer as the API, I'm in control of the resource. Then I loan this resource to you, to my user, and you do what you want by defining that, con that uh, uh, consumer. And then the control of the resource returns to me, returns to the implementer of the API, and then I know how to deal with it. And in this way, I'm 100% sure that nobody can, can forget of closing this file input stream, okay? So in this way, I have a, a, a better defensive API. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm avoiding this leading, uh, uh, leaking abstraction. I'm avoiding uh, the burden for the user to remember that he has to close uh, the stream, okay? This is uh, uh, another uh, example. Okay, I'm uh, the uh, project lead of Drews, which is the rule engine of Red Hat. And uh, uh, a few years ago, we were uh, redesigning our API. So these are, we have one single entry point, which was a very, very huge interface with all the possible entry point, which was very confusing because, yeah, it was one single interface, but with a tons of method that was not really use, uh, usable. So what we did is just splitting it in, in uh, uh, per responsibility. So that, that uh, original API did a lot of different things. It, it uh, uh, managed the, the, the resource, uh, uh, the, um, the rule file uh, managed by the rule engine and uh, uh, add a few methods to add and remove uh, 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 rule modules from the engine, and then uh, add a few uh, uh, factory method for the command to, to be sent to the engine and uh, other factory method to create the logger. So what we did is just having still one single, one single uh, uh, entry point, but that entry point uh, then it is split by responsibility and gives you the different area of the of the uh, um, rule engine uh, uh, interface. So you you say, okay, I want to work with commands. I need to create a commands. Then from this single entry point, I, I, I say, okay, give me the interface to work with commands, and then I find all the method to to create commands. Yes. Why would you name them get? I mean, they're not getters. They're just going to. I would just have like. Uh, dot command dot yeah. Uh, uh, it, it is, uh, as you said, yeah, the question is why it's called get in this, uh, in this uh, uh, slide. Yeah. Uh, actually, it isn't. Uh, it, it's quite an old slide. And uh, yeah, the, 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 the actually, commands without the get is a better name. Yes, I agree. Um, 
Okay, another uh, uh, point about uh, uh, having a defensive API is that, okay, I have uh, this uh, person class. The person class is returning a list of sibling of this person. The problem is that uh, there is not, uh, uh, the, 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 the I'm returning the, the list object in place as, as it is. So I'm, I'm not defending my the data structure of, of the person class and anybody can call get sibling and that's a random person to the list of sibling of that person, which is probably something that you don't want to allow. I mean, uh, in this way, probably you are corrupting the, the data of, of that person. So what you, you should do, it's always, in this case, uh, uh, return a list that is not modifi uh, modifiable. Uh, and in this way, there is no possibility for the, for the user of your API to change in place the data of your data object. And uh, of course, the other, uh, the other suggestion uh, uh, is that uh, uh, you, never, you should never return a null, okay? Because often it happens, so you, are you sure this is not a null? Yeah, it's not a null, null pointer exception, yes, yeah, sure. And uh, the, the way you do this, is, this is something also mentioned by uh, uh, yesterday talk by Venkat. Uh, if you have a list, you always return an empty list. And, uh, uh, for what, and if it, it is not a collection, you always return a, 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 an optional. And uh, you, know, you know, by doing this, uh, you are also again providing one more information uh, to, to the user of, uh, of your API. Because if you say get car, and uh, it is returned with a car, and he has to figure out if the car is there or not, and probably he gives for granted that, that that is there. But by saying uh, optional, you are saying with the type system, okay? In, in the signature of your method, is written, okay, look, the car could not be there. Be aware and do something about it if it's not there. So you are using the type system this, this time in an idiomatic way. Uh, another another suggestion is never, please never use Boolean as argument in your uh, uh, in your API because uh, it's really hard to figure out when I should use a true or false. Okay, here I want to I have a a list of contacts of my employee and I want to get the phone number and uh, I have a method that is uh, uh, returning the mobile number or not based on the Boolean that I'm passing there. But then when I call that method, I have no clue if I should pass true or false in case I wanted the mobile number or not. I, I really don't remember, it's really hard to, and then I need to check the signature of the API that I'm calling to say, to, to figure out that true is mobile and false it isn't. But why should I do this? L please let's use an enumeration even because in, for, for a twofold reason, in, in this way, when you read the statement, it's, it's obvious what you're asking for. It's not a true or false, but it's a, it's a speaking name. And uh, the second reason is that, of course, a Boolean uh, uh, only has uh, two values, and uh, you may want to, use, to have a third one. So if you put a Boolean there, still you are limiting the evolvability of your API. And then, yeah, you put a Boolean there, uh, probably a, a Boolean object. And, uh, and then, yeah, at that point, you have a three value thing because it could be true, false, or null, right? Uh, don't do that, of course. Uh, another thing that I see quite often is what I call, uh, um, it, 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 it's this thing where you have uh, a, a, a very, very complex data structure that is returned to, to, to the user. I call this pattern primitive obsession because uh, the, you are working with list and map, which are your primitive, and, and you are only using them, and they are not speaking to the user, okay? Uh, it's really hard to remember in the registry how the structure of, 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 of this map of string uh, to another map of full time uh, and string it's made. I mean, it's very hard to use this thing for, the, for your, your user, okay? 
And yeah, here, of course, I'm, I'm returning this employee registering where the key is the employee name, and then I have the, 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 the phone type and the, the list of phone number we, of that type. But it's really, really hard to manage this thing. So uh, let's please try to model this thing with, uh, with proper objects. So I have my employee registry, and I'm, when the, I ask for the phone book, I'm returning with a phone book, proper phone book object, which is encapsulating the first uh, the out, uh, outer map. And then uh, for each phone book, I return the employee contacts, which en encapsulate the inner map. Okay, so yes, it's true. It's probably a little more code, but you are making your life uh, much easier for your, your end user because now you have uh, speaking. Uh, object of your domain model that makes understandable for user how to use your API. Y yes, question? You are losing what? Well, you can add this functionality to, 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 to those objects. Yes, I said it's a bit more verbose, but it's the point of, of, of the API to, to be more clear. Okay, so sorry, the question is, you are losing some fun functionality because at that point I'm not longer allowed to add stuff into the map. Yes, you, of course you, you can do it. You, you have to provide that functionality inside your domain object, okay? And, and by the way, uh, you, want or may want to have that thing to be mutable or not. You, you want to have a, a, a read-only uh, phone book or, or you want to have a phone book that is modificable, but if you return a map, you can only uh, have a modificable one. The real, in reality, the only thing you can do is have an immutable one, but at that point you, had, you don't have any uh, compile time check. The only thing you can, you can do is, is throw in an exception at runtime if somebody tries to modify it, which is not what you want. But uh, by, by doing this, you can limit the usability of, of the phone book to only the uh, action that you want to allow on that object. So it, it's done on purpose. Again, it's a bit more verbose, but it's a lot more usable and concise uh, for your end users. OK, uh, there cannot be a Java talk without speaking about optional and without doing uh, some uh, by a little bike shedding about it. Uh, and uh, yeah, mm, the very first time that I you tried to, to use this optional class, in all honesty, it broke the principle of less astonishment that I was mentioning at the beginning of this talk. Why? Because I tried to use that off method and I gave for granted that if I pass a null to, to that off method, I was returned with an empty, an empty optional. But of course, this is not the case. If you pass a null there, sorry, you will be returned with a null pointer exception. And this really, really surprised me. This really made me to jump from the seat because uh, you know, uh, I gave for granted that uh, the, the, the goal, the only purpose to use an optional is avoiding a null pointer exception. I was trying to create an optional, and guess what? I, I got a null pointer exception. It was really surprising to me. Uh, so, yeah, in my opinion, it, it shouldn't be implemented like this. Then, of course, we have this of nullable method that works as I expect. But, you know, if you have a method that is called of, and another meter that is called of nullable, uh, you, you never look at the second one. You give for granted that uh, the default behavior is if for the shorter meter, you try to, to use that, that one, and if you do so, you get that another point of reception. Yes? Yeah, yeah, and there are, yeah. But that surprises people coming from other languages. Okay, yes. So the, 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 what Yarek was saying is that uh, 
there are other uh, problem for instance with a map which is uh, with that are suppressing for you see for instance when you use now less a value i guess you was referring to it right uh and uh yes there are other other uh, uh problem a similar problem in other uh, data structure in java uh but uh, anyway what i was trying to say is that yeah that's probably the default or i assumed it was the default and I believe it was the wrong default, uh, and probably we just need the second one. Or I personally, I always use the second one. But then, of course, I wrote this thing on Twitter, and for some reason, when I start uh, discussing this on Twitter, which is probably not the best media to do this, but for some reason, I, I always find myself discussing this on Twitter, then it's nice because... Uh, I found lots of different uh, uh, point of view. Well, I uh, um, made some screenshot of those with tweet there, not because uh, you are supposed to read them uh, uh, now, but uh, I left there only for your reference in case you want to give a second look to this slide uh, after. But uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, designing a good API is also uh, opening a conversation with your colleagues because uh, you can uh, have some assumption. You can, uh, you know, uh, as I say, the, the, the designing an API is also a uh, balancing act, but uh, you can wait some uh, feature or some characteristic of your API in a different way than the other. Then you want, you want to figure out how to manage the different use case and uh, which one is the most important one. And probably your colleague will come with the use, different use cases to which you weren't thinking at all. Uh, and uh, yeah, a good API again is made of, of many, many different uh, characteristics and you need to decide a trade-off. Okay, you, you need to draw a line at some point uh, and then say, yes, okay, I, I probably want to sacrifice something to get something else in change. Uh, uh, in my suggestion on how I wanted to change the API of optional, I wanted to sacrifice one more method, one method to have a single one factory method. And then in that case, I don't have a method that throws an exception when I pass a null to it because it's not the, expect the, the behavior that I expect, uh, but I have a si in, ch in exchange, I have a simple, a simpler uh, and probably nicer API, okay? And this is another Im very important thing uh, because uh, uh, with an API, when you define an API, you, sh you really need to define the intent of the API. And, uh, uh, and that probably was my uh, uh, main uh, uh, misconception uh, of, of that optional API, because uh, my assumption is that the intent of the optional API was to avoid null pointer exception, okay? And, and uh, Tajir said, okay, look, this is not the intent. The intent is to model the fact that a value could, could or could not be there, okay? So uh, I was probably misunderstanding the intent, and that's why I've been surprised by the behavior of, of that specific method. Okay, so uh, in essence, uh, uh, designing an, an API, it's, a, it's an iterative process. You talk uh, to each other, you try your stuff. Uh, what I like to do is also writing a lot of tests because writing tests, I figure out if I like the name of the method, if I, if I can remember uh, the, the argument and which value should they pass. And if I cannot do this with my own API, it's very hard that different user will be able to, to use it. So again, it is an iterative process where you uh, clarify intention, uh, eliminate redundant method, uh, eliminate uh, leaky abstraction. And in essence, you use your own stuff, you practic practice dog feeding. Uh, because yeah, if you are a sliding door company and uh, your door is not a sliding door, there is something wrong, right? Uh, so. When you design your API, you try to use your stuff, and if you are not happy with it, probably even your user will not be happy as well, okay? And this is what I have. I understand that this talk was kind of strongly opinionated. Uh, it's really debatable, uh, but it's just based on my experience, so any feedback is very welcome. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.